Well, welcome back to Nine Marks of a Disciple, where we're talking about what it means to be a disciple who makes disciples. From the beginning, we've said that a disciple of Jesus is a person that has a Christ-centered identity and a Christ-centered impact. What I want to do in this video is talk about the transition we're going to make from identity to impact. And so this video is an overview of what it means to have an impact for Christ. You know, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, living on the Mississippi River. In fact, my family, my, my great-grandfather uh, was a riverboat captain. He worked on the river, uh, worked with the Army Corps of Engineers and things that they were doing at the river at the time. And so there's kind of a history in my family of having a connection to the Mississippi River. But you may not know that while the Mississippi River has about 3.2 million square kilometers uh, in terms of the, the area that it moves through, um, that there are massive tributaries that flow into the Mississippi River to make it what it is. It is not just an isolated river on its own. It's, it's really a river that's comprised of a lot of other rivers that are feeding into it. Some of the major tributaries of the Mississippi River are rivers like the Arkansas, Illinois, Missouri, and Ohio rivers. The reason I mention that is because I think our relationship vertically with God is like a tributary that makes our horizontal relationships with other people work. Your identity with Jesus is like those tributaries feeding into your life that makes the impact you have for Christ with other people possible. I want to emphasize that I believe the reason we've started with identity first is because we believe the vertical has got to feed the horizontal. For years, I have tried to get people to make disciples. I have given my life to really pouring into other people so that they make disciples of people who make disciples. Let me tell you a secret I learned. The people who sustainably make disciples are the ones that have a robust relationship with God, where their vertical relationship with Jesus is feeding their horizontal impact they have in the world. I've I've tried everything. The people I've seen that have been guilted in sharing the gospel for a while or making disciples, eventually they fall away. People that may even have friends that are doing it. Maybe they have a season where they're around people that are doing that, and so they kind of, it rubs off on them. Eventually they kind of fall away from that too. The only people I've seen really, really make disciples in a sustainable way are people that have this vibrant, loving relationship with Jesus that fuels what they're doing. Those tributaries, vertically, are feeding their horizontal impact with others. Listen to 1 John 4, 9 through 11. It illustrates this idea. It says, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. You and I are called first to this gospel-dependent, adopted, sanctified identity. We believe those four things, intending to those four things, those tributaries are going to fuel the massive impact we hope that you make for the kingdom of Christ. So as we turn our attention now to thinking about impact, I want to remind you of three quick things, three quick ideas to help you as we make this shift to impact. Number one, tend to your soul first, then to others. As we talk about impact, remember, your life in Christ has got to be the priority if you're going to make an impact in others. If you've ever been on a plane, you've seen this illustrated actually hundreds of times. If you've been on a plane, you know that one of the things they do is they talk about the oxygen masks, right? In an event of a crash landing, the oxygen mask is always really <laughs> encouraging, right? But what they tell you is that when those oxygen masks come down, they say, make sure you put on yours first and then help the other people around you. Now, why do they do that? Because if you don't begin to breathe deeply of the oxygen that's there and you start trying to help other people, you're going to pass out. The best way you can help those other people is to first take care of your oxygen mass so you can help other people, okay? The same is true in your spiritual life. If you're going to really help the people around you, you've got to put on the oxygen mask of God's grace every day. That gospel-dependent, adopted, sanctified identity we talked about in the first half has got to be the priority of your life if you're going to make an impact. 
I see so many people trying to do all these incredible things for God. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to do this, that. But if there's not a vibrancy to their spiritual walk with Jesus, they flame out. Number two, remember that the horizontal is the vertical applied. Remember that the impact you're going to make horizontally in your relationship with the people is going to be an application of the vertical. Your gospel identity is going to shape and show up in your relationships. When you are in relationships trying to make an impact, for example, in your family, part of what you're living out is your gospel identity as you herald the good news of Jesus. Your dependent identity. You live out your dependent identity in relationships through your impact when you're reliant upon the power of God. What about your adopted identity? We want you to live from the overflow of your time with Jesus. We want you to have something to share with people because you're experiencing the presence of God. And then your sanctified identity. When we fall, Christ restores us not just back to himself, but back to the mission he's called us to. These four things, these vertical identity elements, show up in how you impact other people's lives. But thirdly and finally, as we move to talking about impact, I want you to have a next step focus to your engagement with this. And every one of these elements, every one of these videos, I'm going to give you another idea, another concept about your impact for Christ as a disciple who makes disciples. But I want to challenge you every month as you work through these ideas to have at least one next step you can take as you live out this impact. What's one more thing that you can do to grow in, for example, your generosity or your vocation or your engagement in your church? Part of what we're going to be calling you to is an honest evaluation of how you're impacting the world for Christ. But I pray and trust you'll be open and honest with the people in your group about what the next step looks like for you in those specific areas. So I'm excited to be on this journey with you as we're disciples who are making disciples, as we walk through the nine marks, and as we turn to impact. Remember, your identity, your vertical, is going to feed the horizontal.